You're listening to Force Majeure, an actual play Star Wars podcast. My name is Adam and I'm your host, and today's episode will be brought to you after these words from our sponsors. Sleep. Bad. Dreams. Bad. Sleep. No. Drink. Cat? Yes. Energy, yes. Cold calf, yes. Cold calf, from shop, drink. No sleep, only energy. Cold calf, yes. Drink. Hi everybody, this is the second episode of Five Musicians Do Crime, or whatever we're going to call it. I am your host. Well, actually, uh, Adam's our uh, host. I am your GM. Uh, hi, Adam. And I'm going to take a leaf out of Ed's book and say, I couldn't do this without some lovely players. And they will tell you who they are and plug something of their own or just say hi. Um, now, in no particular order. Hello, I'm Adrian Tchaikovsky. I am playing a gun named Phlebas. I'm an author and my most recent book is called Doors of Eden, out now. Hi, I'm Ed Fortune. I'm a, the literary editor for Starburst magazine, and I also write a column called uh, Roll for Damage, which is a board games column for the same magazine. I also handle everything that's Brave New Words branded for Starburst. Uh, essentially, I'm all about the books, all about the books, a uh, baby. And Starburst can be bought on your uh, local uh, newsagent shelves, or most likely bought online because that's how everything is done these days. Oh, and I happen to be playing Sam, who is a Basilisk lead guitarist and bass guitarist, because you can do that when you've got two sets of arms. My name is Adam, and I am in the transient meat stage of my existence as an immortal ghost. I am currently playing Sneed Manchuripon, a Thespasian gambler. Hi, I'm Mim, and I'm playing DC Sonic, who is a Chadrafan mixologist. That's for drinks, isn't it? Yes, he's he's also on the decks, as they say. Double threat, I understand. I'm comedian and actor Paul Foxcroft. I also host Questing Time, a live play D&D uh, stream over on Twitch, which you can find by looking it up on the internet. You live now, deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a Wookiee drummer known as Keith Too Big, That's No Moon. You have been asked by the matron and uh, music teacher Astromech of the Dunmore Orphanarium to help to save the Orphanarium from a rather large debt owed to Junker the Hut. It turns out that uh, Junker's rival, a Juros known as Alvar, is taking out all of the um, businesses, all of the enterprises that owe Junker money to cripple Junker financially in order to take over his criminal empire. Therefore, Junker has started calling in as many debts as he possibly can. You have determined that the easiest way to settle that debt before Junker calls it in is to join a hut cartel, all comers, battle the bands almost, and find yourself outside one of Alvar's music shops uh, with the intention of robbing it for the few very vital parts of the musical instruments that you uh, each play that you need to succeed in this battle of the bands. Alvar's musical emporium is uh, across from you and we have determined is on a row of shops with residential units above it, sporting goods shop to the right and a hairdresser's to the left. Both the sporting goods shop and the music emporium are shuttered and closed. The hairdresser's is closed but there is no shutters on it. You are standing on the opposite side of the street and I'm going to flip a dark side straight away. Each and every single one of your communicators starts beeping. Hello? It is a message rather than a, um, a two-way communication. And it says, in very chirpy, authoritarian sort of, uh, sort of speech, Attention, Imperial citizens. Due to increased criminal activity in the city, Chicago is under curfew, with no authorised travel allowed out for the next 24 hours. Breaking this curfew will be a declaration of criminal intent and will be punished to the full extent of the law. This is highly inconvenient. 
I warn you, we may be forced to break the law. Oh, I won't worry too much about that one, geezer. I was planning on breaking the law anyway. Sonic was quite disappointed when the message came through because he was standing there clicking his fingers to the beat of the uh, message. <laughs> well, as uh, DJ Sonic said in uh, in his last single, Criffham and their law. And Sneed starts bobbing their head, clearly reliving some fine old clubbing days. And I'm so glad that you've uh, heard my music and understand it. I did not think it was for the bourgeoisie and the common people. I am making the music of the future. And he gazes into the uh, half distance. Well, the thing is, with some of the beats that you put in there, it jiggers up me tympanic membrane something ferocious. Oh, I'm so sorry. Nah, I like it. It makes me feel like I'm in space. I mean, more so than than we are. Yeah. Right, anyway, how do we want to do this one then? You want me to take a look and see if I can charm the lot or find a pipe to slither in? Does someone want to go and see if there's any cameras that we need to deal with? Or should we just get the door in and have done with a little arse and his bugger? Amongst my people, there are those known as finds men who can find their way into any place and track down any quarry. I am not one of these people. You better do that. <laughs> Do you know any of them? Because if they won't lie, then it sounds like they'd be crazy useful. <laughs> yes, I appreciate that. I apologise for being a disappointment and a shame to my species. Join the club, mate. Join the club. Sam takes a long look at the security system on the side mm-hmm. and uh, tries to figure out what model it is. Okay. Read the label. <laughs> I'll require a, a security roll, if you would. There's no such skill. <sighs> Yeah, I really need to have the thing up in front of me, don't I? Can I suggest an alternative one as athletics? <laughs> Why not? No. Can I suggest mechanics rather than skullduggery? Because I've got lots of that. Happy with you doing mechanics. <laughs> What's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty on this is going to be two purple. It's an average test, but I'm going to add a black dice in because it's dark and another black dice in because you're on the other side of the street. Can I give a boost because I have light up shoes that will help him to see? Do you want to over- overclock them? I would like to give a boost by picking him up and carrying him nearer the thing he's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> Tom is staring at a thing when he's suddenly elevated and can see it clearly. Can I also get rid of another black dye by taking off my sunglasses? <laughs> <laughs> you what? <laughs> you can't get rid of another black dye for it because you get rid of the black dye because it's dark but then you add a black dye because you've taken off your sunglasses but I will give you an extra boost so that would be two black dye and two boost dye Sonic looks at you in a very embarrassed way yeah with the help of your light up shoes and the zoom function which is uh, being given to you by the Wookiee so that looks like I've failed but I do have an advantage and a triumph okay then so you haven't been able to determine what the security system is but you still have a triumph so what would you like the triumph to be can I make a suggestion Mm. There's an off switch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just a box. It's one of those dummy, um, like, house alarms. <laughs> Sam turns around and goes, So, bad news. Um, this is a Sinor Systems alarm system. It's one of the most advanced systems in the galaxy. They've spent an incredible amount of money on it. And I- I'll be honest, I only know about three or four people in this system who could deal with it. But the good news is, is they haven't turned it on. You are right. It has not been turned on. I think possibly because the owner of the music shop is a crime boss, they're assuming that nobody was stupid enough to break in. Ah, they have not met us. <laughs> so the doors are still still locked, but there is no active security system outside. I'd like to flip a light side point yeah. for there to be on the, the roof one of those... You know those kind of air conditioning vents? This kind mm-hmm. of a big square kind of vent on the top. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, too big. Give a snake your boy a hand getting on the roof there and I'll slither my way inside and uh, tease the way out before you. The temptation to grab you by the end of the tail and start spinning is immense. But instead, I simply <laughs> just... I simply pick him up, put him on the roof. <laughs> Thank you very much. We already discussed the fact that you wanted there to be residential blocks above it, so the roof is quite high up. 
So you'll have to make an athletics roll to... You've, you've been given a boost, and you will quite literally get a boost for that, but you'll need to make an athletics roll to get onto the roof. Okie dokie. Am I, am, I, am I doing that, or are you doing it? Well, if you want to climb onto the roof, you can, but basically what I'm doing is your assistance is giving him a boost to his roll. Okay. Oh, unless we could do it as, as a combined test. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So for a combined test, we look at whoever's got the highest brawn of us. Me. Uh, whoever's got the highest athletics of us, which is you. Yeah. And um, <laughs> well, what, do, what are you contributing to this exactly? I am contributing um, nothing. <laughs> nothing <laughs> meaningful. You're hurling me up there like a scaly dart. <laughs> he is contributing mass, and I would I would certainly say this seems like a consequence-free role for me, <laughs> but a consequence-heavy role for him. You are not wrong. Uh, what is the difficulty? That's the purple guys, right? Yeah, so the difficulty, I would say, is two, but I'm going to spend a dark side point to make it one red and one purple. That seems fair. Okay. Yeah, what I'm contributing is, is my face into the side of the wall in a minute. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five explosions, which are good. Yes. And one sort of pie. Puckered butt. <laughs> it's a five success and a threat. Okay. I don't think there's too much of a problem with that threat actually transposing onto Adam because you're being thrown at something rather than anything else. However, with that many successes, you land pretty okay on a second story. You're very kind, because I would have gone, you have so many successes, you throw him over the building. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be mean to successes. Into the sun. <laughs> Yeah, successes are good, so I can't have you killed from successes. That seems a little bit too mean. You land upside down. You land face first, but you land on the uh, on the roof of the building. Sonic presses a button on his box and you hear a crowd cheering as he holds up a small 9.9 .9 sign. <laughs> You do that, there is a definite noise in the uh, in the street. Some of you notice there are two speeder bikes zip past at the end of the street with stormtroopers on it. They don't seem to notice you. <laughs> they don't notice the neon, slightly flashing Chadra fan. There's stormtroopers. Of course they don't notice. <laughs> Sneed picks themselves up, picks up their hat, dusts their hat off, puts it back on their head and snacks their way over to the air vent, opens up their tailcoat jacket to reveal a handy set of small, clearly illegal implements. And I would like to make a skullduggery test, please, to jimmy an opening to slither in. You entirely can. This is quite a difficult lock, but uh, I'm not going to add any reds to it because the um, alarms are off. So I'm going to give you a free purple on this one. Three purple? Okie dokie. You've got your hat on, so no setback on that. I'm not going to even give you any boost at the moment. So yeah, go for it. Two success and a threat. Okay. I'm going to bank that threat, if that's all right. Yep. And the great clips off. You do not seem to have set off any alarms. I'm going to slither my way into the... See, <laughs> is this the point where you let me know that the threat is that as soon as I get into the air circulation of the actual building, it gets very, very narrow, and I'm just stuck there like... <laughs> Well, <laughs> normally in the hollow pictures, this works an awful lot better. <laughs> As the comm goes on. Uh, hello, squires. I I'm in need of some assistance. No, you're fine. You can slither down through the vents. The first set of vents that lead out into a room is quite clearly a residential block. There's people eating their evening meal and watching the local uh, hollow net Captain Codfish hour. It's great for the kids. Yar, you hear as you slither past and you slither down <laughs> onto the first level. Would just real quick, can you just what does what of the Captain Codfish Adventure Hour? What, like what dialogue does he hear? I just I just want to hear what this sounds like. It's a very very commercial fronted show. It's essentially getting them to buy toys. So as you slither past, you hear Ar buy our new playsets. Are you ready, kids? Who lives in a pirate ship under the sea? Captain Codfish. So you slither down to the, the to the bottom floor. You can see uh, through the grate quite a large music shop. What you also see is, in fact, now I'm going to ask you to roll me a perception roll, please. Two purple and one red. Okay, well, we've got absolutely scads of uh, light side points, so I'm going to flip one to upgrade my roll. Yep, yep. 
one success and two advantage. Okay, you see also in the music shop, floating around, looking very much like the Imperial Probe Droid, but a little bit smaller, several are in fact, you've got advantages there, so uh, three or four droids. They look to be urban security droids. They float, they have a number of different arms coming out, like the giant floating squid type things, and they are keeping the joint secure. They are on set paths as if like they're uh, in a very poor computer game as they go around the shop. I tag my comm to the rest of the group. Yeah. What do you want your advantages for before you, you go in? I think I'd like to be able to get out of the vents into the roof tiles yeah. near to the door to where the um, mechanism is that, that rolls the shutters up so that when we are ready... I can start rolling the shutters up so that the rest of the group can just windmill in if they need to. More than happy with that. You can sneak out and you are, at this moment, sitting on top of one of the shelves. This shelf, incidentally, is full of song balls. They're about the same size as a Magic 8 ball, but when you shake them, they make a noise. And a song ball player has maybe a dozen of them, and all they do is they pick up uh, different balls and just give them a bit of a shake. And you are sitting with perhaps 40 or 50 song balls on the uh, <laughs> on the top shelf. If you make any sort of mistake, it'll all go fine. Don't worry. I come across the room. All right, geezers, I'm inside the shop. The good news is that I'm in and I'm secreted away near where I can get the shatters up when we require it. So gross. The bad news is I'm surrounded by balls. What? There's also a couple of floaty little squiddlers in here that are going to have ourselves a very poor day. So when I get this shutter open and we're ready to break ourselves in, you might have to come in hot and heavy. I also apologise, because with my throat being like this, coming over the comms and exactly what I'm saying, I realise that I sound like the sort of person that you probably report to the local clone groupers. <laughs> If you receive this phone call unsolicited. Yeah, no, it's it's more your the choice of words is just like weird, like sort of quasi-sexy. It's it's weird. <laughs> it's a burden I have to bear. I don't know I don't think it is. I think it's a choice I think it's a choice you're repeatedly making, but hey. Yeah, it seems like a burden everybody else has to bear. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic's like, what kind of balls? And what kind of squidlings? Singing balls. The kind that when you give them a little squeeze, it makes a beautiful music. You don't squeeze or caress them, Adam. You just shake them. Just want to point that out. Jiggle the balls. Did you say there were security drones? A couple of them. Like three or four of the little floating buggers. I might be able to drop me out on one of them, but uh, I'd struggle to... Uh, disable every single one of them they're about watermelon size mate you'd have to have a big hat but you could put a bag over them or something like that i've never stated the size of my head (laughs) are they following set paths or are they actively searching they seem to be following pre-programmed pathways pick the correct moment to open the shutters and we will stealth in like shadows uh, yeah, look, about that. Um... <laughs> it is a matter of correct thinking. You two can be a shadow, a large shadow. Yes. I might be able to slow them down. Uh, you, 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 you two? I, I have a bit of a knack with the computers and electronics. Ed, to use your mechanics, you could definitely slow them down if you were interfaced with them, uh, as if, like, you use your mechanical knowledge and a screwdriver or space screwdriver or whatever it is to give them a bit of a go to affect them from a distance it'd probably be more of a computer's role Sonic I have an idea prove it (laughs) (laughs) if you could patch them in we could probably jam them or we could get them to jam now that is my jam baby also as a backup I can hit them with this stick I found (laughs) So what are you guys doing then? You seem to have a vague plan. Just a quick thought, team. Once we steal the music and instruments we need, won't we need some kind of thing to carry them in? Like, you know, a van. Space van. 
Speed it. Speed it. Let's speed it. I thought that was phase two of our cunning mastermind plan. Well, yeah, but like that was that was what I thought this was going to be better and we were smarter than we are. Um, <laughs> Never make assumptions about how clever anybody is. It's just, aren't we going to wind up carrying a drum kit through the streets while we try and steal a car? That is a very valid point. We are only retrieving... Oh, yes. We are retrieving an entire drum kit. Yes. I mean, to be fair, I've got these sticks. I can pretty much... like. You know what? Screw it. I don't need a drum kit. We'll just break a droid on the way. I mean, for me, the bees are mostly self-carrying. Mm. <laughs> Wait, there's a good point, Mikey. I'd like to just have a look through the shutters and see if this music shop has a functioning beehive. <laughs> Can I just check around and see if it's like a music emporium slash apiary? <laughs> you, you, you know when I said what you could use light side points for? This is exactly what I you would like. To, I would like to use a light side point to ensure that there's like a you know in you know in really fancy music shops you go in and you can go into like a separate sealed booth with headphones to listen to yep. music. I would yep. like there to be a sort of massive back to tank full of bees. <laughs> you go in to get attacked by bees. With a tap. <laughs> Naturally, because that's how you get them. You squint in through the, the shutters, and you can see from the ceiling there are signs coming down, and one of them says pipes, and one of them says drums, and the one next to it says bees, and then the one next to that says... Can it say fresh bees? <laughs> <laughs> on, on tap. Yes, but fre fresh is in, in inverted commas. <laughs> And because it's a sign that could potentially be wrongly put through, there is a grocer's comma in bees. Between the B and the E. <laughs> the E's. The E's, yeah. Sonic taps uh, Phlebas on the shoulder and says, Out of curiosity, would wasps have worked? It gives an inferior tone. It is not acceptable for sacred music. Also, and I, I don't claim to know the ins and outs of Phlebas' people, but I can happily state this. All wasps are bastards. <laughs> He's not wrong there. It does work for angry protest songs, however. <laughs> Wasps against the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Writing that one down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's your plan? Well, now I realise we need to steal not just a drum kit, but a hover drum kit, which is fine. I'm sure they'll have one of those in there. But right now... Right, so he pulls out his uh, Shahadu bass, which is a long, thin, scimitar-looking like thing. It has the word Rebel written on it, obviously. And he begins to modify it so it can play frequencies, and then looks at Sonic and goes, if you can provide the rhythm, I can provide the beat. So what are you actually doing, Ed? Tell us without being cryptic and musical, what, what's going on? Okay, so I'm, I'm creating a device to jam the signal on the drones. Okay. But I need Sonic to actually get into the machine to do that. Then I'm making a machine that'll do the jam. And because this is the sort of party that it is, I'm assuming that everyone else starts it and we get an impromptu musical number that none of us can actually do. I, for one, am hoping, because of where we are structurally in the movie, that we create an impromptu dance number with hundreds of people in the street doing a series of preordained uh, <laughs> dances. Or we, or we ruin Aretha Franklin's business model. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that we have spontaneously dancing stormtroopers who have conveniently left a space van. Nice. Light side point? Not yes. sure how many light side points we'd need for that one. <laughs> <laughs> More than one. Can I ask either Ed or Mem to roll either a mechanics or a computers as a joint roll? So you can basically, whoever's using computers can use mechanics to boost and the other way around. I have um, three ranks in computers. So I'm going to go for that. Ed, can you boost with mechanics? I can boost with mechanics. So Sonic flexes out his arms, shakes himself down, opens up his mix deck. Yeah. And you can see some laser pointers coming out that he's planning to direct onto the droids to be able to get an access. And he also opens a small side pocket of the table and a tiny disco ball droid pops out. And the aim is to try and use the laser and the disco ball to make a connection to the other droids that Tsar can manipulate. It's a hard roll, so that's three purple, but I'm going to upgrade it with a dark side point, so that's one red and two purple. One red and two purple. 
Just before he does the roll, you see him put his headphones on and start to get a beat to the music. You can't hear any of the music, so he looks incredibly sad, just standing there bopping along to himself. <laughs> We're having an iPod party! <laughs> <laughs> right, so I get a boost from Ed. All together, that's three yellow, one green, one blue, versus one red and two purple. Chadra found the earphones must be enormous. <laughs> they are. Oh no, he just uses little pods. My word, I'm sorry, I have to show you this. Two triumphs! Whoop, whoop! Excellent. Two triumphs? What are you, Caesar? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> What's your final roll then, Mim? Two triumphs and one additional success. Yeah. And one threat. I'm going to bank that threat. And what do the triumphs do for us, Mim? There is an amazing light display that goes off. The droids don't just decide to power down. They start beeping to a rhythm and music <laughs> kicks off the shutters raise up and that amazing dance number that we were hoping it is, is all set the, the rhythm is there the beats there the droids are shaking their tail feathers is that what you're saying absolutely gotcha i've basically created the stage for that rhythmic dance number and everybody can just walk in and start picking up their instruments and moving it on. And I'm just pointing at various droids and making them go... Mim, they're a minion group, so you can take them out with that triumph. Um, however, you've got another triumph, so what do you want? I mean, I'm thinking that, that a double triumph is probably enough to have the dancing Imperial Stormtroopers leaving their unattended van. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is super cool, yeah. Let me suggest, if if I can, that the Imperial Stormtroopers do roll up in a van, and because you are wired into these droids, they can be enough of a distraction with their dance routine that you can quite easily steal their their van with a minimal of problems. I'll go for that. Yeah. Can I just get the scene right in my head? Yeah, yeah. So. We walk up to the front of the building. Yes, yes. We start playing musical instruments. The shutters go. We go in. We nod at each other as we pick up our instruments. We do a full musical number. Yep. Which it sounds like it's hard techno, like 90s style. Oh, yeah. There's a proper techno sort of beat to this one. But how long is the drum solo, though? <laughs> the drum solo is mostly um, too big, picking up drums and sticking them under his arm. Yeah, but rhythmically. Yeah, rhythmically, obviously, yeah. Testing them out as he goes. There are plenty of bees. In fact, there, there is in here. I mean, it's very expensive, but you are stealing it. A queen. So you can quite happily stick a queen in, in, in your husband. <laughs> box and a bunch of stormtroopers turn up halfway through but because it's quite clearly a promotional thing for the the music store they join in yeah yeah essentially all of the security droids trundle out into the street and start doing a rhythmic kind of dance to all of this techno that's going on which the stormtroopers drive up and because the um, droids whilst there is a curfew droids aren't on a curfew because they're just droids the stormtroopers stand there watching this big spectacle as it were for the music store leaving their stormtrooper speeder completely unattended it's going to take a stealth check to get everything in but yeah it's it's, it's, it's certainly doable I see we went for the sneaky uh, <laughs> 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 cracking you hear as, as the beat drops <laughs> hey, too big. I understand that stormtrooper helmets make a really good sound. Oh. You make a great point. Bear with me a second. I'm going to decapitate some fools. <laughs> <laughs> I would like. Sorry, Mim, that's your, your, your triumphal little bit out. But I would like an initiative check from everybody, please. Uh, in fact, no, I'm not going to do that because you've got a triumph there and I don't want to waste it. So I would say there is a surprise round going on in which everybody can have a go at stormtroopers if they wish. How many How many troopers are there? There are two of them because it's a uh, buddy cop sort of style thing on. So there's only two of them there standing watching it. You can quite easily, with a good enough roll, bash their heads together. It is too purple to your roll. I will give you a boost because they are not expecting it. I've got f six crabs. Yeah, no success, but six advantage. Okay, so you don't actually do any damage to them, but you have a massive amount of advantage there. 
maybe they don't realize that you've actually tried to kill them. They just think that it's like it's it's translated into a mosh pit now, and they think you're just moshing with you rather than you know actively trying to kill them in the face. If you want their helmets, you can have them for those advantages. Sure. I think what I'd like to do is just elegant, just as they, as they're sort of chasing the robots around, just as they run past, just be like, yoink. Yep. Uh, and whip their helmets off. They won't know. They're stormtroopers. You totally crash the helmets together, but they're not wearing them at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So the stormtroopers, they're not going to be completely distracted. I will like, like initiative, but you have parts of your drum kit from the stormtroopers. Mikey, is there enough advantage there to also get, like, I don't know, their guns? Are you just slowly stripping them as they dance? <laughs> this is erotic! <laughs> Taking their guns from them seems unlikely, but I would say with those advantages, they don't have their guns on them, they're back in the speeder, because they didn't acknowledge this to be a threat. So, to set the scene, outside the music shop, there is a Imperial pursuit vehicle. There are four droids doing a, a dance routine to heavy techno. There are two stormtroopers with no helmets on and no guns watching the spectacle and you all are laden down with musical instruments from the shop what are you guys doing i've just realized we missed a trick i should have been a dog this could have been dog step <laughs> i really disappointed you're not a twilek because i really wanted you to be called twilex so what are you guys doing well as the probably the least laden down member of the party i'm going to have it on my toes over to the speeder Okay. You skip your way over to the speed of Phlebas. It's not locked because of the sheer amount of triumph we got previously. You can nip in if you like. Regardless of the size of the speeder, you will all fit in with all of your musical instruments because this is the Blues Brothers. I'd like to slither past the stormtroopers and lift the speeder keys from their belt. Unless the keys are in the ignition. I don't know. Are they in the ignition? No, no. I'd need a, a subterfuge roll from you, if possible. What's everybody else doing? Give us a sec, Adam. We'll find out what everybody's doing, and then you can roll. If the stormtroopers aren't immediately hostile, then I'm going to take their helmets, toss them in the back of the speeder, and hop in the driver's seat, because that's the thing I can do. They will be hostile, but this is a somewhat of a surprise round, and they probably won't be hostile until you're all in the speeder and ready to leave. Cool. In which case, can I just throw one of them onto the roof? completely but if you do throw them onto the roof you won't be in the driver's seat by the time they get round to being hostile so uh, you can fair. either have it away lightly on your toes or you can have a bit of an altercation with them you can you come and drive and I'll, I'll 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 take shotgun with my shotgun right then i'm gonna starsky and hutch over the bonnet yeah or if you live in america hood yes starsky and hood yes starsky yeah, starsky and hood. Gonna starsky and hood. <laughs> Over the, I'm going to Starsky and Hood over the car face. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, hop in the driver's seat. Okay. I'm going to use all my limbs to get as much of the stuff that we need, so I'm dragging half the drum kit and the various bits and pieces. Ed, turn the tap. Fire the bees at them. <laughs> <laughs> Release the bees. <laughs> and with my last lord of stuff, so I've put everything onto uh, the drum kit hover trolley thing. And I'm shoving that and just, I lean over comically, finish my musical interlude bit, and then finish it off by releasing all the bees. Ah, by breaking the bee glass thing. Yes, the bee uh, glass. The, <laughs> by breaking the, the back of the tank full of bees. Yeah. And then just going, bee solo! <laughs> <laughs> Bees fly out from the back to tank, filling very quickly the music shop. The stormtroopers click out of their reverie of this techno marvel, and one of them reaches up to his ear and says, I think we've got a problem, and then realises he's not wearing a helmet. They both double-take look at each other, and you all start piling into their trooper mobile. I would just like a moment just for the shot, there to be a shot, a reverse shot, where they look behind them, and in their car there's a Wookiee wearing a stormtrooper helmet flipping them off. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Song is going to have to have, have closed down all of his equipment while the droids are still flashing. And because I need a few electrical components, is there any chance I can nick one of the droids and that'll have the last of, of the components I need for a truly excellent beat? I, I don't see any problem taking one of the security droids with you. Cool. That'll do me then. Okay. There's certainly no way that can be tracked. <laughs> no. <laughs> I totally think that Flevis's bees need little... I can, electronica bees, that's what we need. Tiny little metal outfits so that you've got 
a wider range. I could totally soup up your bees. Glam metal bees. Adam, do me a, a, a subterfuge roll while we're doing this to swipe the keys. What's the difficulty? Difficulty is going to be their perception, which is absolutely terrible, so it's an average test. I am going to take two strain, yeah. and I'm going to double or nothing this, so I increase difficulty by one, but I double any uncancelled advantage at the end of it. Go for it. Oh, that's not great. Uh, that is a failure with two advantage. I am going to use my second chances yeah. to re-roll the yellow dice that's got a single success. Okay which comes out exactly the same. So that is a failure, but with two advantage. Okay, so you don't manage to swipe the keys. Two advantage, is it not four advantage now, because you've... Oh, sorry, yes, it is four advantage, because I'm a double or nothing. So with your four advantage, what, what's happening? I'm suddenly thinking that in our group, we have some extremely good engineers. Engineers good enough to hotwire this vehicle. So as I lean in and swipe the keys and miss, what I instead pull is the pins on the frag grenades on their belts. There's a moment as Sneed holds them up in his hands, kind of side eyes at the pins in his hands. The grenades start cooking off on their belts, gives them a big old grin, and then they slither as fast as a big snake can right into the back of the van, pull the doors behind and goes, uh, we need to leave pretty sharpish because <laughs> it's about to get bright out there. Did you get the keys? Not so much. Do you toss me the two pins? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, I slide between the two people in the front of the cab and um, hotwire the vehicle. The techno beat stops suddenly with a massive explosive finish. Those of you who aren't Ed see two stormtroopers rather gruesomely explode. It's a hell of a show. Ed, I'll need a mechanics roll from you. I feel a little bit bad about that, I'll be honest. They'd have been fine if they weren't wearing hel- if they were wearing helmets. <laughs> you did a murder. <laughs> I did. I did a pair of murders, in yes. fact. Is that difficulty two? Yeah, difficulty two. It's not a difficult thing to do. Criff my whiskers, Ed. This dice roller just loves you. Two successes and a triumph. Okay, so the car purrs into life. What's your triumph? Did you overclock it? <laughs> I have, yes. I have accidentally pulled out a, a switch thing that goes, I think this is a boost. Well, well, put it back in then. No, hang on. <laughs> and I, I wire up the illegal nitro that they already confiscated of someone else. Yeah. Wire it up and go, push that when you need it. All right, cool. I just took a look at the dash and go, ah, I see now this vehicle is displaying as both fast and furious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All uh, right, hold on to your bones. Uh, and I, I floor it. You floor it, zipping out from the uh, the side street into the main streets of Chicago. But I haven't got any bones. <laughs> <laughs> Have a rubber thrown in the back of the van. Some must have landed in there. <laughs> I think I sat on a bee. <laughs> the streets seem empty, so unsurprisingly, seen as there is a curfew on, and you easily zip along the empty streets at quite a pace. You have 300 miles to get to the nearby city of uh, Detrosis, and you are in an incredibly fast patrol vehicle. Um, which, um, as luck would have it, is something that the uh, stormtroopers do not mind on the streets. You zip out of Chicago at great speed. You're definitely going to be able to get to the uh, to the Allcomers Battle of the Bands in no time at all. You're going to be there in plenty of time to play. I'm going to flip a dark side point, and Mim, you're twiddling around with the security droid in the back. Surprisingly, there's a lot of room in the back here, even though there are several members of the band who are quite large. There are also several musical instruments that are quite large, and one Rodian who wasn't part of the band, who seems to have handcuffs on and looking somewhat <laughs> confused about what's going on. Do you want to be our hype, Rodian? Here's a pair of maracas. Your job's to get out front and shake it vigorously. Jolly, he's our Rodian. <laughs> He's your Rodian, yes. Uh, I am genuinely kicking myself for missing that. And I feel <laughs> like I've let everybody down, <laughs> quite honestly. Safe, your Rodian friend. What's your name? Well, it's now Bez, obviously. Um, Bez. <laughs> Do you know any songs about 1920s prostitutes? I'll learn them if you take these cuffs off. 
Team, I'm driving, so I don't feel like I'm equipped to remove his cuffs. I've shimmied my way loose out of a couple of cuffs in my old time. Let me have a little uh, pokey-wokey at those and then. <laughs> it just sounds so unsavory. <laughs> it does. Well, you're having a pokey-wokey. I'm actually going to spend that dark side point that I just spent. <laughs> He's a mass murderer. <laughs> I, I thought the dark side point was that we've got a Rodian. It's just that what we haven't worked out yet, <laughs> that he has no, no rhythm. That is not the dark side. The uh, security droid you're twiddling with, uh, DJ Sonic, beeps to life. It looks like it's sent a transmission some... Oh, dear. If you were a betting Chadra fan, you would say that the notorious gangster, who you've just robbed the shop of, knows exactly where you are. Uh, he shoves the droid, having ripped out some bits, into the Rodian's hands and pushes the Rodian out the car. <laughs> <laughs> we're going quite fast. Yeah. So the Rodian is just communicating with um, whoever's next to him and says, well, I, I've got a pretty good feeling about... And, oh! Hey, you know, the nice thing about speeders is that if this vehicle had wheels, we'd be really inconvenienced by all these knives in the road. <laughs> <laughs> Blomp, 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 squish. We have no idea what happens to the Rodian as he disappears into the dark. I think we do. <laughs> I think we have a pretty good idea what happens this to the Rodian. This is a PG-13 uh, story. <laughs> we have no idea what happens to the Rodian. He definitely doesn't fall on many, many knives. If anyone is looking horrified at Sonic, uh, Sonic just points a thumb at him and says, No ticket. <laughs> No, actually, actually, I think I know him. He's pretty bad. Plus, we were being tracked. Shrugs and goes back to work. Well, I love that. I love the no ticket reference. I would also have accepted. Can you fly, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so many of my favourite films involve people being thrown out of vehicles. Yeah. No, no, it's never a good film unless somebody is thrown out of a vehicle and then a pun happens afterwards or before. Yeah, deal with that, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, you zip into the night, no longer being tracked, but certainly the you know, Duros crime boss knows exactly what's been going on. I would like to disrupt a right-wing rally by driving directly through it. There is no right-wing rally in front of you. However, it is a curfew, and there are lots of stormtroopers on the streets. So there is a lot of stormtroopers who are essentially right-wing space Nazis, just all out in the way you can quite happily do a piloting role to go straight through them. What I'd like to do, ideally, is we're like hairing it down what I imagine is a sort of expressway. Yes. Um, like, get wind that there is a parade. Yes. I would like to take a detour directly through that parade. Sorry, is there like a, a Sith reenactment group that's currently... <laughs> <laughs> you have to go through a shopping mall to get there, but you can definitely do that. And as we draw this episode to a close, as the patrol vehicle you're in bursts straight through at full speed, mind, a Sif reenactment and Stormtroopers Day picnic parade. None of them being killed, obviously, because they all leap off the bridge into the water. You head on the main freeway towards Detrosis and the Battle of the Bands Hut Cartel competition. Your vehicle filled with musical instruments of your various choices and bees. While we're there, I'd also like to, uh, if I can find like a sort of, like a, I don't know what the, the term is, like a sort of hover house being driven by a load of country western types. Uh, a band called the Good Old Bothans. <laughs> <laughs> Behind you, as you zoom towards Detrosis, there are a number of different Winnebago drivers or space Winnebago drivers filled with Bothans. There is a number of uh, very similar looking patrol vehicles and speeder bikes. There are several dozen crime boss type car type Duros in big black speeders as they zip towards you and and you are taking quite a trail towards Detrosis you have not been sneaky you've not been uh, silent you have not been at all subtle in your escape from Chicagoras I like to think that what one of us is doing is using the um, what would usually be the, the siren on the speeder yeah to loudly announce that there is a gig. <laughs> and it's ladies' <laughs> night. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Mikey, just before we sign off, yes. Uh, can I just check my pouches? Because I have like, the pouch special ability. Yeah, yeah. How many death sticks do I have left? Oh, you've got at least a pack of them. Half a pack of them, I would say. So you're saying it's 300 miles to Chicago. We've got a full tank of gas, half a pack of death sticks, 
and it's dark and we're wearing sun- sunglasses. Hit it. We're on the road. We, we're mid hitting it. The point of time to hit it was some time ago. Also, it was three hundred. <laughs> it was three hundred miles about an hour ago. I don't know why I said that. It just felt right. If anything, look, it's actually one hundred and six miles. <laughs> Because this dial is set to how far from our destination we are. <laughs> There's just a GPS going, turn left in 200 parsecs. Yeah, that, that's not the GPS, my droid's malfunctioning. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's set the uh, the GPS to Wookiee, so every so often the, the car goes... <laughs> <laughs> the car just screams. <laughs> Recalculating. <laughs> <laughs> but too big knows that's how that's 106 miles okay with that um we're gonna wrap up this week's adventure we will see you all in a couple of weeks where hopefully the band will get to the battle of the bands and pay off the massive debt that the uh, gambling nun has presented the orphanarium with thank you to everybody who's been involved today and thank you to all of the players here And before we leave you, this episode's patron is Evan Wise. He came for the adverts and he stayed for our sweet, sweet style. Thank you so much for your support, Evan. It's very much appreciated. And we're glad you're enjoying the show. And we will see you, and indeed everybody else, next time. Force Majeure is played using the Star Wars Force and Destiny game system by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Our intro music for this season is Unholy Night by Kevin MacLeod, and our outro music remains Suburban Outlaw by Forget the Whale, both used with gratitude under the Creative Commons license. If you like the show and want to interact with us, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, all of which are at Force Majeure Pod though Twitter is probably where you're going to find us more regularly. If you enjoy what we do and want to support the show, there's three ways you can do that. The first is via our Patreon at patreon.com slash forcemajeurepod. The second is by buying us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash forcemajeurepod. And the third way is by rating and reviewing us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, anywhere where you can find us. We really like reviews. It tells us that we're telling the stories that you want to hear and helps other people find us. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time.